Hi, welcome everybody to today's webinar called Excel to Nine, which will be presented by Daniel Weikert, who I will um, introduce in a bit more detail in a moment. I'm Skolk Gerber. Um, I'm the curriculum designer at Nine. But before we get to Daniel's presentation, let's just quickly run through some practical arrangements. Um, next slide, please. So just uh, to orientate you, what can you expect from today's webinar? So Daniel will be presenting for about uh, 45 minutes. And then at the end, we'll have a chance about 15 minutes for a live Q&A. So speaking of questions, please do post them. You'll find a Q&A link at the bottom. Um, I'm joined by two of my colleagues, Lisa and um, Corey, who will ask quickly, uh, briefly introduce themselves in a moment. They will be answering some of the questions in the chat. And at the end, Lisa will facilitate a couple of questions uh, to Daniel, who's going to then answer them live. Um, quickly, Lisa, could you introduce yourself before Corey also just shows his face? Thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this Excel to Nine webinar. I'm Lisa. Um, I'm with the evangelism team at Nine, And yeah, I'm here today to help out Daniel a little bit with the questions um, in the chat. And also, you'll be hearing from you later. Enjoy. <laughs> And I'm Thanks, Corey. Lisa. I'm a data scientist with NIME um, as well, and I work with Lisa a lot. We're looking forward to your questions, so uh, please use that tool for us. Thanks, Corey and Lisa. Um, so there you go. Q&A is definitely possible. Then the session will be recorded. We'll be posting it on our YouTube channel afterwards. The links to all these things that I'm mentioning now will also be sent to you in an email afterwards. That includes the slides, um, which will be available in the NIME forum. If there's any example workflows, we'll upload that to the NIME hub. Um, and then the last interesting thing, because the theme is uh, Excel to NIME, we actually have a, a nice booklet that we've published on this, which um, there will be a link available now and uh, hopefully in the Q&A, uh, we can download it for free. So if you wanna work through it and, and, uh, in a different uh, format, uh, you can download this book for free um and it will also be the link will also be sent in the email afterwards the nine forum link will also be sent in the um <clears throat> excuse me in the q a or in the chat okay so that's a practical arrangement quickly a few words on daniel before i give him the word so daniel has been on our uh, radar at the educational team at nine for a while now um, and mainly because he really builds, um, from a learning perspective for users, builds really nice courses that he hosts on Udemy, very successful. He also has a YouTube channel where he uh, creates videos for users, um, which for us is, is quite helpful and valuable. On the other side, Daniel is also a BI consultant. So he has, a, a, from the business perspective, he's also uh, very experienced with uh, um, multiple years uh, experience as a consultant. So that also feeds into to nicely into the to background of this theme. Okay, so that is from my side. I'm going to give the word over now to Daniel and he'll take it from there. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Shark. Uh, first, can everyone hear me? Just want to make sure that works. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, th thank you. Great. All right. Then um, let's get started with uh, the webinar today. So we already heard it's about uh, Excel. So actually uh, getting from Excel to NIME. So um, my assumption today is that uh, all of you who are listening to this or watching this later on YouTube, you are business users. So you're coming from the business side. You are maybe analysts or maybe even data scientists. And uh, of course, uh, all of you have prior Excel experience. I mean, who has not? Uh, it's just a tool which is used all around the world for various uh, um, reasons and for various tasks. I just uh, wrote down a few of them, like financial reporting, for instance, or also if you're tracking inventory. And there are so many other uh, use cases for it because it's quite flexible. And it's uh, let's face it, it, Excel is a great tool. Uh, but um, the problem is uh, that um, Excel also has shortcomings. And a few of them, you might be familiar with them, but I just wrote uh, them down here, which is, for instance, we have in Excel a 1.x million row limit. I think it's 1.4, but um, I'm not completely sure about it, but it's uh, somewhere in this range. Um, you, you might uh, circumvent that in some ways uh, because you can use Power Query if you're familiar, familiar with that. 
uh, but still it, it is an issue, it's a limitation. Uh, then you also might have, uh, I call it buggy VBA code. Uh, I used to do some kind, a little bit of VBA coding, but I don't really like it. Uh, it's my personal view, uh, but still um, I encountered oftentimes um, workbooks uh, which have this, this code included and uh, then the code doesn't work. Or you have invalid cell references uh, when you share your files with your colleagues, for instance. Um, or also, uh, which which happened to me at least, and maybe or probably for to some of you as well, that um, you have some kind of complex workbook, and uh, then uh, the the person who actually created this workbook, uh, maybe including VBA, uh, has left the company, and uh, all other colleagues use the workbook, but then it breaks, and you are the new guy or new girl from the block, and then it's up to you to to fix it. And uh, if there's no documentation, then yeah, I mean, good luck with that, right? Uh, this is this is an issue, for instance. Um, and also, if you share your files um, and you expect users to maybe input data in the file in a certain in a certain way, then uh, most often when you receive the file back, you will have uh, everything but not the results you actually wanted. So uh, these are just a few examples. Uh, there might be even more, and I'm sure about that. Uh, but um, you probably are familiar with those, and that's why we all experience, uh, let's say. What we can see on the screens are like uh, this kind of, um, well, uh, mood or behavior. So what, what is the solution? What can be a solution? Um, it's time actually to explore further options. And one of these options, that's why we are all here today, is a name. So you can see here, uh, I have just uh, made, made screenshots here for Excel. You're all familiar with the table structure, which you can then slice and dice, meaning you can filter the data, for instance, or you can create your calculations uh, with Excel formulas and so on. And on the other hand, we have NIME. Uh, there's also a screenshot here, which is a, a drag and drop tool, which we're gonna cover just in a minute, also in practice, which allows us to create workflows. And you can see one of these workflows here, for instance, on the screen, and you can see the whole NIME interface. And the great thing uh, for NIME to get started with NIME is that uh, the NIME itself is open source, so we can use it, um, especially if you get new to NIME, you can use it for free, you can start for free. There is no trial version, there's no limitation regarding this, so you can really explore all the features. And later on, of course, if you want to use it professionally inside a company, then uh, your company can purchase a NIME server license, which gives you then all uh, the power of NIME and also allows colleagues for you, for instance, in the company uh, to run your workflows and, and get their results using your workflows. So having said that, um, at the start, um, I just want to- uh, hey, hey, Daniel, uh, I just quickly want to interrupt you. I think there's some issue with the microphone. Uh, your voice is breaking uh, in between, like there are some comments coming in in the q &A. If you okay. can just quickly um, adjust now, Can you hear me better? Not the best right now. Not the best. Um, let me just check. I think connection is good, but does just that the does that work? Yeah, I think it's a bit better. It's better. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Um. So did uh did anyone miss something? So I need should I repeat something and let me know. No, I think you can go ahead. Should okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um. So uh, just to begin with, uh, a, a few questions which I want to address at the beginning already. Um, because these are, uh, let's say, the starting questions which always arise is, for instance, um, a question like, in Excel, I can do X, Y, Z, any kind of transformation, and how can I do this in NIME? Um, a few of them we're going to cover. Um, others, you, uh, which we might uh, skip, then, of course, you can ask this, and later on, we can answer this either in the chat or you, that will also be posted in the forum. Um, then a question like, do I need to prepare my data up front in Excel in order to use it in NIME? Um, clearly, no, you don't have to do that because actually you read the data into NIME and then you do your transformation steps or even uh, your data science uh, steps if you want to do any kind of data science in NIME. Um, question like, what data can I actually use in NIME? Is there any limitation? Uh, today, we are focusing on Excel, but uh, actually there is no real limitation. So if you have a text file, if you have a database, um, if you want to extract data uh, from the web, and insert this into, in, into NIME and use it and prepare it, all this is possible. 
can I save the prepared data in Excel? So let's say you read the data from Excel files and then you prepare the data. And then at the end, you want to just write it back into an Excel file um, and use it for whatever kind of reason. Uh, this is also possible. Yes, it is possible. Um, do you need programming skills for nine? Also a question which might arise at the beginning. Uh, no, you don't. Um, if you have any kind of programming skills like Python, for instance, or R, or also Java, uh, then that's great. And you can use this in NIME. There are dedicated nodes for that. So you can write your own code and use it if you want. But if you don't want to program or you haven't learned the skill yet, uh, no worries, because you don't need it in NIME. It's a drag and drop tool. And the final question I'd like to address here is directly, do you can, can I create charts in NIME or any kind of visualizations? And yes, you can. You can do that either in NIME. There are various nodes um, and extensions to do that. Or you could also, for instance, write the data directly to Power BI or also to the Tableau server, um, which are also kind of two additional data visualization tools which you can use directly in combination with NIME. So that's actually it for my short PowerPoint presentation. And now I would go into a demo session so we can have a look um, at how NIME works. So let me just. Open NIME, I already did this in here. And uh, this is actually the, the interface you see. You have seen this also on the screen, which I shared uh, in the PowerPoint presentation, the, the, the image. Uh, that's basically uh, what NIME looks like when you, when you start. Normally, there's a welcome screen, uh, but I already uh, closed it. And you can also um, remove it completely if you want. Uh, hi, Daniel. Again, uh, it's breaking again, the voice. Sorry. OK, then let me just switch to a. My microphone, which I use, just a second. Yeah, that'll be better. I think it's just a headset. So can can you hear me now? Yeah, it's good. I think it's good now. It's better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then let me continue. Um, so I opened Nime, and um, you can see here this is what it looks like from the interface. You can see uh, on the top right the uh, Nime Explorer. The most important things here is actually uh, there is um, the Nime Hub. Uh, Nime Hub provides you various uh, workflows. We can also uh, find um, solutions provided by other great uh, uh, community members and, and also by the Nime team, which you can then use and take a look at uh, when you want to learn Nime or try to figure out how certain things work. And then there's also your local workspace. That's the same for everyone. And there you can create your own uh, Nime workflows. And uh, down there, there's the node repository. Node repository just covers uh, actually all the nodes we can use when we want to create a NIME workflow itself. And here in the middle, I call it uh, actually my, uh, my NIME work uh, or my canvas actually, uh, where I can drag and drop the nodes in order to create my, my workflow in here. So um, for today's session, I brought part of my, um, my NIME course. Um, so regarding the data, so um, for instance, here inside, I have various files and of course also Excel files because that's our, our main goal today. And if I'd say I'd like to import data in NIME from Excel, then I could use here, for instance, the Excel reader node. There, if I search for Excel in the node repository, um, search option here, I can drag and drop the Excel reader inside my canvas. But before I do that, of course, I need to create a new workflow. Um, the workflow itself. So you can do that by either right clicking here and create the workflow, or you can first create a group, which is a kind of folder structure, which you can also see here on my screen. And inside the group, then you can create the workflow. So if I right click here and say I'd like to create a new workflow, I can also do that. So for instance, I name it that way, click on finish. And if I do that, uh, then just a second, it will open in here. 
and then I can now have my webinar here, I can get started. So as I said, I can drag my notes inside here as an Excel reader, and then I need to configure this node. So each node has a kind of traffic light system. In this case, currently it's red because it's not configured yet, but you can easily do this by either right-clicking on the node and press configure, or you press F6, um, you can also do that. And if I do this, then you see a pop-up window appearing. And this pop-up window here, uh, there you need to specify now the file path, as well as additional information um, for um, the specific Excel file. One thing I'd like to highlight here is that whenever you explore a new node, then when you drag the node in the canvas and it's selected, there's also a description on the right side, which is quite extensive and very good. So uh, there, kudos to the Nine team, uh, because they really um, describe in detail various transformation settings in here. So if you're completely new to a node, I would highly recommend drag the node inside the workflow and then read through the description um, on the right side, because this gives you a lot of information about the node itself. So as an example, let's configure this. If I go to browse here, and then I go to my uh, webinar folder here and to data, I could, for instance, choose here my sales Q1 as an example. I can click on open. And if I do that, you see that now um, the node uh, allows me here to, to have a preview of the data down there. And I can also now configure this. So uh, typical um, configuring, for instance, I can select what kind of sheet name do I want to import here in Nime, or uh, do I want to import only a specific range of cells? I can specify that down here if I don't want to read the whole sheet or other kinds of configurations. In here. And if I'm done with that, if I'd say that's okay, I can see the preview, that looks fine. I can click okay. And then I can either right click or to execute. I can press F7 on my keyboard or also up there in the ribbon bar, there's also an option to execute the workflow. So if I execute it, I see now the traffic light is green and I can go inside here. I can take a look at the file table here and I would see the data read into nine. So normally into memory. So um, if I take a, a look in here in my folder structure, I would see that my sales Q1 is in here and I also have a sales Q2. Now, what if I'd like to have uh, maybe sales Q2 inside also nine? The first time what we did, what we, we selected the Excel reader from here and then we dragged it inside and then we had to configure it. But for flat files, meaning for Excel files, for instance, also for text files, which you have stored locally, you can do that uh, quicker by simply dragging and dropping the file directly in the, in the workflow. So if I do that, drag and drop here, then the window in here appears automatically. And you see here exactly the same preview. You can see the data in here and you can configure it the way you want it. If I, if I click OK, and if I would execute this, I would have my data also in line. So exactly uh, the same way. Now, um, what if I have a use case, for instance, I say, well, I have two uh, sales files in here, Q1, Q2, and I want to put this in one table. So I want to put this together. Now, instead of dragging and dropping files individually inside here, I can actually do this with one node. A node is the same. It is, again, the Excel reader. I just need to take a look at the configuration. So meaning, if I um, just, let me just remove this for now. So if I drag the extra reader one more time from here and I want to configure it, I also have the option up here regarding the mode. Instead of using an individual file, I can choose files in folder. And then I can point to my folder, not a specific time file anymore. So I can go to my webinar folder and go to my data folder. And I can click on open. And the first thing I can see is that I got some issues in here which tells me, for instance, that there are also files which are not Excel files, which is true because if we take a closer look to my folder structure here, we see that I have your various files. I have Excel files in here, but I also have, for instance, a table format, which is a nine specific format, where I have CSV files, um, so comma-separated files, which are also not part uh, of the Excel files, like Excel is X, Excel is M, and so on. And also, one more thing is that I don't want to read all the Excel files. I only want to have specific ones, the sales Q1 and the sales Q2. So how can I handle this? Well, we could go in here, and then under the filter options, 
we can check this box and then this appears. And this allows us here to specify, for instance, for the file extensions, I only want to have X LSX loads, or in this case, files. And beside this configuration, I also like to say regarding the file names, I also want to make uh, use a subset here. And the great thing here is that NIME provides wildcards as well as regular expressions. So if you're familiar with them, you can also check this and use them. But in this case, that's not required. We can use easily wildcards because if we take a closer look at the folder, what we want is we want all the files starting with sales and then underscore and then queue something. So in this case, only those two files. Which means that if I go in here and I search for uh, sales, and then underscore, I could use a queue, it's not required, but I could do it. And then a star, star is a white card for everything. And if I click OK, you see that now there are only two of 14 files in my folder selected, which is true. Because if I go here, these are 14 files, and only two of them have this specific pattern. And so, so um, that's why this is fine. And I can see one table structure down there, which also tells me that time has picked up some data correctly now. And if I click OK, and I would execute this node, and I still have one node, an Excel reader, but regarding the configuration here, I can see that I got here data from January 2022. And also, if I scroll down, see my table is much longer in this case. And here, for instance, I have data from April, so from the second quarter which is coming from the second file. So this allows me then to read multiple files in one node into nine, which I can then continue to process. Now, but what if, what if I have, let me just, here, see that, make this a little bit smaller. Can I do that? Get some. Some issues here, okay. Um, so what if, um, if I take a closer, closer look at my sales Q1, for instance, and also sales Q2, let me just show this to you. It takes a little bit to load. The problem is, or the, the challenge, let's say, is that in this case, I have January data in this file, I have February data, and I have March data. Now, what we have seen is that uh, actually only, uh, the Excel reader only read the first file. Uh, in this case, the first sheet, January. And the same is true for the second file. There are also three months in this file. So three different kinds of sheets, which all have the same table structure, but still these are three files and we only read the first one. So in both files with the Excel reader, we only read the first sheet of data and then we combined them into one table. If you think of Power Query, for instance, from Excel, you would say we just append those two files in nine, it's called concatenating, but it's meaning the same. So what if I'd say, well, what I actually want is I want to have all the, um, well, all the different kinds of months, for instance, from one sheet in here. I want to combine all of them and read them. Or even if we go further, I would like to see all six months. So the, all three sheets from this specific file, and I want to combine them with all the three sheets from the second quarter. And for your use case later on, you might have a third and a fourth quarter and so on, or maybe even multiple years. How can we handle this? This is something which I can't show you directly here. It would take a little bit too much time um, to, to do it manually. But what we could do is, of course, I can show, oh, yes. I can show you um, the way it works, just to explain at least um, the idea behind it in line. So, um, to actually get this result, we can go, in, we can dive into loops. So um, I have here my data solution, and this is actually uh, one option to read um, maybe all the three different uh, kinds of months from the first sheet. So the idea behind this, if you search for Excel, there's also a node which is called read Excel sheet names. This node is quite easy. You just drag it inside, you point, the same way configuration to a specific file. In this case, it's, it's a file itself. And then you read it and what it gives you as an output is actually the path to all uh, to the same file, but for all the sheets. It also gives you the sheet names. 
So it tells us here we have one uh, Excel file, but with three sheets. And uh, what we want uh, as an idea, we want to actually read each sheet individually and then append the next one. So we loop or iterate through these three sheets. That's what we want. And this is why we need to read the sheet names first. Because then in NIME, we can actually create a, a variable loop. And this variable loop, loop, actually all it does, it takes the first row from the input, which it gets. And then uh, it does something. And then it ends the loop. And then it takes the next input. So basically, this loop, all it does, it's reading the data in the first iteration as the first row of data, in the second iteration as the second row of data, and then the third iteration of the third row of data. So it gives us the individual names in each iteration. I can also show this to you as the output here, because it has here now a path and also a sheet name, which is in this case March, because I already run through the loop, so we are already in the third iteration. And this name, the name of the sheet, this will then fed into the Excel reader. So instead of going here and configure the file here ourselves and also the name, we can in NIME use the flow variable tab. Again, you don't have to remember it. If you want to use it, uh, go to the NIME hub. There are great workflows and they show it to you in detail. And also, um, believe me, it is not as difficult as it may sound at the beginning if you have never seen it before. You just have to do it one or two times and uh, uh, you familiarize yourself with it. And there we point to the specific sheet. That's what we do here. And then we read the data, in this case, the sheet, which is now coming from the variable loop here. And then we just close the loop, we end the loop. And um, this workflow, just wrapping this into a loop, if we take a look at the collected results, it gives us here now all the data. And you can see here, we're starting from January. And if I scroll down, in this case, I have the data for February. And if we we'll scroll down to the third one, I would have the data for March. And this allows us to read actually all the sheets inside one Excel file and then just append them, or in line, we would call it a concatenate them. And then we have our output as one giant table. And then we can, of course, transform this further down um, the, the workflow. And the other option which I wanted to mention is this, um, this one. It is actually uh, a little bit more complicated, but um, more or less exactly the same idea, because uh, this one here deals with the fact that we have not only one sheet with multiple, uh, sorry, one file with multiple sheets, but we actually have multiple files with multiple sheets. So in this case, we have six sheets, right, in two different files. So to read this in NIME, what we can do is then use a so-called list files and folder node. And this node, all it does, it returns here all the files which are relevant for us in the folder, which in this case are only those two. And then we use, we start the loop again, but this time we just wrap the inner loop. So this part in the middle, this one here, is exactly the same as we had up here for reading the data from one file but multiple sheets. And we just wrap it in another loop, which means that we do the same as we've done here for one file, but now for all the files which are coming from the list files and folders. Because this one here, this node, tells us exactly the different kind of files we want to use through our loop. And then as a result, we get exactly, if I go here and take a look at the collected result, we get here all the six months inside. So it's starting from January and so on and so on, February, March, and then we can see here there's April, and so on up to June. So all the data is inside in one giant view. So that's just a, a little, um, let's say, a look in the future, let's say, for, uh, for variables, because variables are not, uh, not, let's say, not a beginner uh, topic, but they are not as difficult as they might sound at the beginning. You just have to familiarize yourself with them. And as I said, one more time, uh, the, uh, the NIME community is a really great uh, option uh, to figure this out as well as the nine hub because there are great people working there and also always trying to help you. Two additional things I'd like to mention here is also when you re want to read the data um, in, into NIME. And let's say you have an Excel file. You might think of, well, I have an Excel file, but the file itself is not 
on my local drive. The file might be coming from, for instance, from Azure, so from Blob Storage, or from Amazon S3, for instance, or from SharePoint, so any, any kind of online source. If that is the case, you can also read this in Nine, because in Nine you have specific notes for that, which is here, the authentication notes, like for Microsoft or for Amazon, for instance. And then you can use any kind of, well, um, connector, in this case, SharePoint, I use this as an example um, from Microsoft, and for Amazon, I used S3 as a connector. And uh, then you can use the Excel reader, but this time the Excel reader itself just uses the connection from the SharePoint and then just reads the data from there. So instead of using a local file, I'm here pointing to a file which is online on my SharePoint. In this case, it's also the sales file. And if I take a look at this, I get exactly the same table and then I can process this in line as well. So you're not limited to a file you have only stored locally, for instance. You can also get it from online sources like SharePoint, which is often used, or block storage, which could also be used, or Amazon S3. So just as an example, this would also be possible. And not only for Excel files, but that's our topic today, um, but this would also be possible for other, other flat files, for instance. So um, then, um, Let's have a look at a few, uh, let's say, common Excel functions, which you can use in NIME and how would they work in NIME. So let me just uh, I'll create a new workflow here, for instance, this NIME project. So, so remember, just right click here and create a new NIME workflow or go to local here and create it from here. So this one is currently empty, that's fine. But let's say I want to read the data here. And uh, let's actually start with the most often used I would say at least this one of the most often used, uh, let's say, functions in Excel, which is the VLOOKUP or index match. So in Nine, um, I have an example here for you. Let's say I want to read the data from my sales representative. I have it, and I can drag this into uh, drag and drop it in here, in my project, and then I have here my preview. And in this preview, what I can see is I have here a sales area. Now, this sales area here is, for instance, RC or RN1 and so on. So actually, it is currently an abbreviation. And what I want is I want to have the real name for that. Because I want to then map this to a, uh, this table uh, or combine this table actually with a different uh, source I have. So in order to do this, I need to first uh, replace or actually using a VLOOKUP kind of mapping to get here the, let's say, the the full um, um, sales area names. And by the way, the product names here are energy drinks because I'm a personal fan of them. And then there are also some kind of uh, names from sales managers like Daenerys Targaryen, Jon Snow, uh, or Sheldon Cooper and so on. So you probably have never heard them, I guess. So um, now how can we actually replace them? Well, in Nime, it works more or less the same way as in Excel because in Excel, you need a kind of mapping table for that. And in NIME, you actually need exactly the same. In NIME, it's often called dictionary, but more or less, it's, it's the same. So uh, let me just execute this. So we have the data already in NIME. And then let me show you the other one, which in this case is, uh, I have here my region dictionary. I named it this way, but it's also an Excel file. And I can drag and drop it in here. So let's drag it here. Okay, here we go. Smaller. And uh, then inside here, I have here my table. So just rescale it That's because of my two screens. Okay. Uh, my table in here. Let's just execute and let's just one more time. Yeah. Okay. This is my table. And uh, this has here uh, the region names. These are the correct ones. And you can also see here my misspelled ones. Um, I would say misspelled is a little bit confusing and not completely correct because actually it's just an abbreviation. And what I want is I want to replace my, um, in this case, my abbreviations with the correct names, but in my sales rep um, data. So uh, let me click OK. And then let's just uh, take a look at how that works. So um, the great thing in NIME is that there are actually more than one way to, let's say, skin the cat. So there are more than just one solution for a problem, which is very interesting because it uh, also makes sure that you always learn something new when you use Nine. So um, what we could do is we can use the so-called cell replace. So cell replace as a node, 
which allows us to replace cells with name replies. And one more time, I'd like to highlight, if you don't know what a node does, drag it inside and then have a look at the description because it tells you exactly what it does and also how you can configure it. So in here, we need our original table. So the first one with our data, um, so the main table and connect this per track and drop into the cell replacer. So the back ports here, always these are data ports. And I can do the same here. Let me just first configure it, uh, execute it, and let me just connect it to the cell replacer. And the cell replacer for configuration is just, what is our target column? The target column is actually the one we want to replace, which in our case is the sales area. Because one more time, let will take a look at this one. The sales area here currently is the abbreviation, like RC and so on. So that's why we want to replace this one. So we say, this is our target column. We want to replace the sales area. And then we have here an input lookup. So which is in our case, the misspelled. That's true because the target column currently contains the abbreviations. And in our dictionary table, so the second one, also the misspelled are the abbreviation. And what is our replacement? The replacement is actually the region names. So the full region names. So now we have configured this. And now we can say whether we want to append this as a new column, or do we want to um, say uh, replace the current column? So let me just first uncheck this uh, like it is by default, click OK, and then let me execute this, go to execute here. And then you would see if I go to the table with place com, you see that now I have in my sales area here, the correct names, like region central, uh, region north one and so on. The other option would be that I go in here and say configure and I actually do want to append it. And if I check this box and click okay, the only difference is that we get an additional column. So if I right click here and go to table um, place columns, you see that now here's our replacement, this one here, which contains the correct names and the original one, which we looked up was this one, but it's still there. So if you want to keep the column, just check the box. If you want to override it uh, immediately, then of course you can also uh, directly uh, leave it unchecked and then it's just replaced. So this would be one way to do a so-called VLOOKUP or index match, uh, like you are familiar from Excel. Then um, also to have another look at that, uh, I have another file in here, which is in this case, just see that, let me just drag that up which is this transaction file. In this case, um, sorry for that, it's a CSV file, it's not an Excel file, but it contains transactions for energy drinks. And it's also part, in this case, of this data set. So let me just drag this inside. As I said, this works for any kind of flat file and drag and drop it into my. And here it also picked up already correctly the column delimiter, sometimes in German, for instance, oftentimes a semicolon, but in this case, it's a comma, that's fine. And I can see here preview of the data. And in here, I could also see there's a sales area. In that case, region central and so on. And then there's also a product name. And uh, my goal is now that I want to map my, in this case, my sales representatives, which I got from this file, to this, um, in this case, transaction data, which I have here. So to do that, just a bit smaller, let me click okay. And let's actually run this also and get execute and see that we get the data into nine, like that. Here we go. So here we can see the transactions. And now in order to map uh, the data from our sales rep, this is why we, by the way, had first to replace uh, the in this case, the abbreviations were correct names because only then, if our result here, only then we have the product name column as well as the replacement column here, which we can then use in order to map our sales manager column to our sales data. And to do this, again, it's kind of a VLOOKUP, but this time I'm going to show you a second way how you can do the VLOOKUP, which is the joiner node, meaning I can go inside here and search for joiner. In the joiner node, if you are familiar with databases, you probably know what the join is, left join, right join, and so on. But if not, um, then it's, uh, of course you can easily look it up on the internet, but it's basically also a kind of, kind of lookup in a certain way. 
and uh, I can then connect the same way as we do it for the server place. I can connect here my first node. I can also connect here this one, like that. And then join a configuration. If I go to configure here, I then need to specify which are, in this case, the specific columns which I want to uh, do the join on, so do the mapping on. The main advantage here is that the joiner allows a mapping based on multiple columns. The cell replacer can only use one column. But in this case, we have two columns because we have a sales rep not only for each, in this case, sales region, but also for each product in the sales region. So that's why I need to specify here my sales area from this table. And I need to here link this not to the sales area. Remember, this one is still currently the abbreviation. I need to link it to the replacement because we added this as an additional column. So I need to link this to the replacement. And I also want to add another criteria here where I say, in this case, I have a product name and I also have a product name in here. So like that. Then I can specify what kind of join I want. I also have the option, by the way, to say not, only, not all criteria needs to be met, but only one of those conditions. It's also possible to set this here. But for now, we say we want to have everything. We click OK, and then we execute this. And now we can see that inside here, uh, inside my join result here, I now have these additional columns in here. And there's also my sales manager column, this one here, which gives me here exactly now the correct sales manager for the product in a specific region. So this is just uh, the VLOOKUP. I just want to mention this at the beginning because it's one of the most often used nodes. But let's explore maybe a few additional nodes. So for instance, what you also do oftentimes in Excel is filtering data. For instance, um, here in line, we can use various filter for that. We can filter columns. We can filter rows of our table. In this case, let's say we want to filter rows. So there's a row filter node. And that's just one option to filter the data. There are various. Uh, row filter options. But for this one, let me drag it inside. Let me connect this like that. And then under configuration, as always, there's an option to choose which of the columns we want to actually choose for the filtering. And let's say I'm interested in the product name. And here, without doing any advertising here, I'm searching for Red Bull, for instance, as the Red Bull, because this is one of our products. And if I click OK, and I would execute this node. I would see that my result now is filtered, I have less data, I have only 4,000 entries, and all of them are pointing here to one specific product, which is, in this case, you can see here, it's red hole, all of those. So this allows us, for instance, to, to filter the data for a specific product. And yes, it is all poss also possible to filter by multiple products, for instance, or multiple criteria. Um, other functions is, for instance, how do I handle duplicates? So for that, just, just search for uh, in here for duplicate records, so duplicate, and there's a duplicate row filter. So if I drag this inside, and also maybe I don't want to continue this workflow here, I can also get the output from the joiner and drag this inside my duplicate row filter. And then I could here specify in configuration what are actually columns which classify a duplicate? So do all the columns need to be the same in order to be a duplicate value or only certain ones? I can then choose here what I want. So I can remove this, for instance, or I can remove everything of them. And then I can specify which are the columns which actually classify a duplication. In this case, if I go for all of them, then I also have the option to configure this further and in advanced how to handle the duplicates. So do I want to drop them? Do we want to keep them and uh, maybe add a flag to this and all of these things? For now, I will skip this. I just wanted to briefly mention. It. So if I click OK and I would execute this, then you would see, for instance, here that my original data and the joiner, but take a look at the join results, contained here around 38,526 entries. But for instance, my duplicate row filter here under filtered data contains a little less. So if there were a few duplicates in my data set, for instance. Um, the time is already uh, quite uh, short now, but let me just at least show you one last note, which is uh, regarding pivoting in Nine. So um, you're all familiar with pivot tables in Excel, and you have something kind of similar in Nine. And if you search, as the name implies, 
for pivot, you would find there is a pivoting node. And if I go for the pivoting node here and drag this inside, let me also connect this maybe, for instance, to the node in here. I could then go in here, I can configure it. And here I need to say, what is actually my grouping column? So what do I want to have on my, let's say, Y axis? And uh, this is, for instance, let's say, I want to see all the countries. So show me all the countries, a unique list of countries. What are my pivots? The pivots are the column headers, the new columns I want to create. And this is, for instance, let's say here, my product names. And the last one is what kind of data do I want to aggregate? And in this case, I only have here one numerical column currently, which is quantity. So I can add this and I can choose the different kind of ag aggregation mode. In this case, I want to have the sum. And then I also would like to here have the original names, which is a setting here that I don't want to have, for instance, the sum of amounts somewhere in my headers. I just want to keep the original names. I click OK. And I can execute this. And then I can take a look at the, the result of the pivot table. And this would give me, for instance, now, uh, um, well, a view which tells me exactly, OK, this is the amount which has been sold for a specific energy drink in a specific region. So this is one way how you can build uh, these kind of pivot tables, kind of similar. It's not exactly the same, but it's kind of similar to what you're familiar with on Excel, for instance. And uh, if you want to export data, all you need to do is search N for Excel. And next to reading, you also find, for instance, the Excel writer node. And it's quite easy to set up because you just back inside, you connect your output which you want, and then you just specify in the configuration where exactly you want to write the file, and then you click OK, and then you execute the node, and that's it. And uh, this is just uh, just really a few nodes, uh, just an introduction to NIME. There's so much more to explore. And I can also just show you in the case study, which I'm doing in this in the pseudomic course, um, there we, we explore various nodes, which, which you're familiar with. Like for instance, you also need to convert data types maybe, or you want to do some kind of math, mathematical operations or string manipulations, like you know upper, lower case and these kind of things uh, for your data set. And all this can be done in nine with various nodes. You can rename columns that's also included here. So as I said, there's much more to explore. And I really hope that uh, this webinar today gets you excited to get started with MIME and explore all those notes. Thank you very much, Daniel. Yes, I, I believe this was a really good teaser. You took us from the start and slowly built up to all the functionalities that you not only can do in Excel, but uh, how it's done in, in uh, NIME and all the other possibilities that it opens. Um, you quickly wanted to share some of your links. I think keep that for the end. Let's just jump into maybe one or two questions um, that Lisa had from, from the um, Q&A. And then I'm, I'm going to ask Daniel at the end just to share. I mean, he has this wonderful course on it. We have a wonderful booklet from NIME. We can just show that links as well again uh, to if people want to follow up on this. But Lisa, do you have maybe one or two interesting questions there uh, that you found in the, the Q&A? Yes, so um, there was one question. Um, it said, or it was that, is it possible to read data from Excel's data model? So not from a data, uh, like not from an Excel sheet. From a data model directly? Um, I assume if I understood the question correctly. <laughs> and and uh, I would say, uh, I assume that the data model is pointing to um, um, a power pivot. Um, probably. Um, as far as I know, this is not possible to read the, uh, the power pivot data model directly into NIME. But what you could do is because normally the power pivot data model uh, is either depending on, on, on various tables coming from yeah, either Excel files or um, from, uh, from a database, of course, you can read those tables into NIME. But in general, um, the data model regarding the combination of various uh, combination of tables uh, as a structure and then use this, for instance, um, uh, yeah, in a database or for a data visualization tool, anything like that. This is this is done outside of mine. All right, thanks for that. Um, I hope that answered the question. Um, then there was another question uh, and it was rather like, could you maybe show um, how to apply formats to a cell? Um, yeah. 
So just just to show an example, someone pointed um, out, it would be great. Yeah, I mean, um, there are various ways to do that. Um, uh, one would be, I just need to see whether I have this installed uh, in here. Um, so one way uh, to do this is there are nodes, uh, which are called like XLS control um, uh, or XLS formatter nodes, let's call it this way. I think it's a Palladian extension. I'm not completely sure right now, um, but um, you would find, of course, uh, either the, uh, the answer to that on the forum, or of course, you can also paste it then. And I will, I will refer um, the link to those, uh, but you can download them for free. And uh, the way they work is just here, for instance, it's called XLS font formatter. Let's so just search for XLS I should actually find them because I installed them here. Um, and there are various uh, various nodes which allow you to, to format. For instance, uh, this font formatter, if I drag it from here inside and configure it, uh, then I can say um, here, what is the, the specific, um, let's say, range in my Excel file? In this case, it has a tag, header. And then I can specify, okay, what font size do I want to give this specific uh, range of my Excel file, for instance, and what, what the font size and, and what the font color and so on. And this is for font. And it also exists here for, for background, for instance. Uh, do I want to have a background for this Excel cell? And so on, I can also do this. Um, um, and beside these nodes, um, there's also uh, one node, which uh, I have actually discovered recently. It's, it's really a great node. Um, uh, I think it's um, a right to Excel formatter, but I'm not sure whether it, this is the correct name, uh, but I can look this up for you if you want. Um, this is probably really the best node uh, I've experienced so far which allows you to actually um, write to an Excel file uh, without um, uh, removing um, the, the formatting. That means that you can actually format or format a range inside the Excel file and then tell NIME it should write into this file, but not overriding the format. So this might also be very interesting to you uh, regarding this question. Yeah, that's that sounds good. Um... Thank you, Daniel, for, for showing us uh, all these multiple functions. Lisa, do we have maybe one short more question? Because I want to give Daniel, just before we finish, a chance to just show share his links to his courses and uh, again to the book as well. Also, Shantano, maybe post that link to the forum. All the questions that we couldn't answer now, you can go post there and they will be attended to there. Hopefully, Daniel can also pop in there. Lisa, do you have one small one yet? Uh, uh, still? Um yeah for example there was another interesting question which might be uh, interesting for everyone is um do you have any ad advice on data arithmetic or transformations which are painful or can be painful in excel do you have any tips tricks or any advice uh, data which are painful in excel um i mean <laughs> That probably depends on the person, right? I mean, some are familiar with uh, or like uh, specific functions uh, more than others. But um, I would say, uh, uh, I would say, um, just if you if you have something uh, which you are currently in mind, which you think of, which which is very painful to you, um, and, and you want to figure out whether there's a smarter solution in Nime, then I would say um, um, have a look uh, at Nime and first install it. And uh, then uh, go to the NIME forum and then paste the question there. And I'm com convinced and completely sure that uh, the community is then giving you um, an insight into that, um, which, which you might uh, find very useful and, and much more easy than, than doing it in Excel. Um, it's difficult to answer for me, uh, me the question because difficult means something else for everyone. Uh, but this would be my general advice. That's correct. But Thanks. Uh, one last uh, question from me would only be, would it be possible to share parts of the workflow or your workflow? Um, we can also share it later, but I just wanted to point it out that it was requested. Uh, yes, okay. Um, yeah, I, I can do that, yes. Thank you. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, maybe it's some useful uh, to, for people to open and play around with the with the um, workflows. I think that will be also in the hub and the links will also be seen. All the links, again, the video recording slides, the workflows, Daniel just commented, um, and the link to the to the forum will also, plus the link to the free book you can download, XL to Nime, will also be sent to you via email. Daniel, can you maybe share that last slides that you wanted to show 
just before we uh, run out of time. So Daniel, yeah. again, has a brilliant course, I think I believe on Udemy that you can run through as well, these uh, links to. But anyways, let Daniel speak more about that. Uh, yeah, sure. So thanks, uh, Shabak. Uh, the last thing I'd like to point out was uh, what Shabak already mentioned. Um, so there's uh, Catherine uh, Meta. She works at NIME, I think, as a data scientist. And kudos to her because she has created this great book, which can download for free, which uh, Shrike already mentioned, and I would highly recommend to every one of you uh, go to this link, download the book, have a look at it, because it really describes in detail uh, the notes in NIME, which are comparable to Excel. You have seen a few of them today, but uh, the book tells you, of course, more, and you can really go on your own pace through it and, and read it. So kudos uh, to Katrin and also the NIME team for providing this completely for free. And uh, yeah, Regarding myself, if you want to get in touch with me in a certain way, I'm on Xing, which is the German smaller LinkedIn. I'm also on LinkedIn, and I also have two YouTube channels. The one is German, so if you're from Germany, you can have a look at this one, and the other one is uh, English. Uh, then, uh, of course, so feel free uh, to join uh, this channel. I would be glad, of course, if I can meet you there as well. And finally, the last thing I'd like to point out, uh, please be become a part of the NIME community. Uh, so uh, just... Uh, uh, get started with NIME and come to the community and um, ask your questions. And also, of course, uh, later on, the better you become with NIME, also please participate and, and share your knowledge there uh, because it's a really great community where, and there are great people. Um, I can't mention all of them, but they're really great people who want to help out, who invest their, their time, their leisure, their free time. They're not paid for that. And so kudos to all of them. Thanks. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, no, that's that's really true. You're also part of this community with your your courses and, and your videos. And uh, I think you're also very active at the NIME in the NIME forum. And that's really a very helpful thing when you get started with NIME, especially in the beginning. So thanks again, Daniel, for, for presenting for us today. I know we had a little bit of technical uh, um, uh, glitches here and there. Um, apologize for that. I think it's probably the weather here in Germany. It's really turbulent at the moment. But I think we could understand you for the most part. Um, we, it was really insightful from our side um, and thank you all for joining um, and hope hopefully you can download the book or follow some of these courses look also at the courses we have online from NIME side if you want to look into more advanced things I think there was a question about sentiment analysis machine learning etc all these things are possible so please go have a look and then thank you everyone and have a good night all oh day and if that's uh, if you are from another continent thanks <laughs>